hey, hey, we're going to talk now about things actually changing, you know, not just pushes and pulls, but uh, changes in shape, and that's, uh, and that's what strain is. So when a force is applied to an object, that object changes, right? If we, you know, bend a piece of metal, it bends. <laughs> hey, that's exciting. Uh, this is called deformation, okay? And like stress, deformation can be normal. Uh, that is, it's along the length of a line. If we expand something or compress it, compress it or expand it, uh, or it can be shear. We can change the angle. And when we measure uh, deformation, um, we call that uh, strain. Uh, and normal strain, which is this little epsilon guy here, uh, is measured along a line. So if I'm going to measure the strain of this rubber piece here, I'm going to measure this line originally, uh, and then I'm going to measure this line again after the change. Uh, and I'm going to find that I'm going to get a delta S, right, which is going to essentially be the length of this guy minus the length of this guy, the delta change in length, uh, over the original length. Now those are both going to be the same units, right? So they're going to divide out, and so strain is unitless. It's essentially a ratio, right? How long was this initially uh, compared to how long it was um, uh, after the, the, the load was applied? Uh, by convention, uh, strain, normal strain is positive for expansion and negative for compression. Okay, so that's the big idea with strain is it's a ratio of the change in length to the length to the original length and because of that it's going to be unitless so we can also talk about shear strain right if we look at this this line here when we stretch this rubber piece that angle of that line changes slightly right here it's at 45 degrees here it might be you know 46 47 degrees that's shear strain, and we actually measure shear strain uh, by that angle. Um, technically, we're measuring, we're taking the length of the line, so imagine this is, uh, say, that diagonal line, uh, and we're going to measure how far the end of that line moves, like if this guy gets pulled over to this dotted blue line. Uh, we have an L here, that original length, and then we have how far its endpoint moved, W. Uh, and those are the values that we're going to use to uh, calculate shear strain. So that shear strain, which is this gamma here, um, is W over L. So the more I move this, right, the more, the larger shear strain I'm going to have. That makes sense to us. Um, and then we can do some math to make this a little bit easier for us, or uh, to kind of convert this to an angle. Um, tangent of theta here is opposite over hypotenuse, W over L. So tangent theta equals W over L. And tangent of theta is equal to theta when an angle is really small. And most of these shear strain angles are going to be really small. Uh, and we call that uh, small strain analysis. Um, which means that um, we can talk about shear strain as just being an angle. Rather than a tangent of an angle, uh, we just call it that theta itself. And you can test that out in your calculator. Uh, just make sure that you use radians. So let's do a little shear st or strain example. Uh, so we've got a plate here that is fixed on one side, on A and B. Uh, and it is being pulled off to the right here, okay? So it's being pulled this way uh, by a large bear, <laughs> by a large bear. A bear, sure. <laughs> it's a really big bear that can, uh, that can create this much strain in an aluminum plate, but we're going with that. We're going with it. So first of all, we want to find out what's our normal strain along BC, okay? BC. This one is pretty straightforward here. Because we're being pulled to the right, um, we're going to find the original length of this line. We're going to find the length of that line after the load is applied. Um, that'll give us our delta S, uh, and we can find our normal strain. 
So we take epsilon equals delta s over s. Here's our delta s, the change in length. There's our original length. And there is our strain. And that looks funny, right? Because it doesn't have a unit, right? So, so you're expecting on the test, meter right off to the side, units, don't forget your units. There aren't any. So you're safe here. You can forget your units. So that's a straightforward example of, um, of normal strain. And that's like, that's a big strain, as you can imagine. It's not easy uh, to add any length to, uh, to these, uh, a piece of metal. Uh, and so very small strains are actually pretty substantial. This looks like a small number. It's not really a small number. All right, so now you all uh, try this out. So we found, now you wanna find the normal strain along AC. You're gonna do the exact same thing. You're just trying to find the original length, find its length after the change, uh, and then um, use our strain equation. So go ahead and do that. I'll pause. Okay, and now we'll get started again. So if you need to keep going, just pause. Now, um, hopefully what you did uh, was found the, this guy, the changed AC minus AC to get your delta S. Uh, and you should have found something like, you know, what is the length of this? Uh, oh, I'm gonna, my math is gonna fail me <laughs> here. 1.4 times this guy. So, you know, 220 or something. Um, that's going to be its original length and then you redo that uh, knowing now that this is 152 and 150 uh, and you should be able to find that new AC. Now we want to find what um, this, this, um, the shear uh, strain is and so we're going to talk about a change in angle um, so we want to find the angle in radians before we get any change. So we're going to use this angle here. So that's, that's an easy one. And then we find the angle after the strain. Okay. Um, and so you're going to have to think about uh, how we can do that. I give you some uh, some options here. So this is a multiple choice. I forgot it was a multiple choice for a moment. We could also use the law of cosines, um, but we're gonna we're gonna do this the simple way. So you're gonna uh, want to find a right triangle that uh, that remains a right triangle even when this angle here is no longer 90. So we're going to use uh, the AEF here uh, to find half of theta, right? So I want to find half of theta, this guy here. Um, tangent of that is going to be opposite, 76, over adjacent, which is going to remain 75. And I can find that that's 1.584 radians. Then we can find the strain. Okay, so it's going to be my delta theta. Um, pi over 2, which is my original uh, theta, minus this new theta. Uh, and I get a, a value in radians here, right? It's an angle. And that is the way that we express our... Um, our shear strain. Now, what do we do with this negative sign here? We're not going to uh, pay too much with this uh, attention to this sign convention, in part because if I chose a different angle, like if I chose this angle here, uh, I'd get a, 
a different sign. I get a positive number. Um, and so we just want to be careful uh, that we're paying attention to how an object is changing. Okay, so we're going to be with angles with the sign convention for shear strain. Uh, we'll mostly just look at what we're doing and say, okay, theta is getting bigger here, right? That's what we need to know. And we won't worry too much about whether it's negative or positive. All right, that's our intro to shear. Oh, to strain, I mean.